Hey, Kevin. Uh, hey, thanks so much for uh, joining us in the car uh, for our little tour of Amsterdam. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about uh, Kubernetes and, you know, software while we go. Mm -hmm. um, do you wish to, or could you introduce yourself to the listeners? Yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Kevin Wan. Uh, I actually started my uh, contribution to upstream Kubernetes uh, back to 2015. Oh, wow. And uh, I, I used to do a lot of uh, around the uh, scheduling part. Mm -hmm. And also uh, since 2018, I started to work on uh, a little bit more about Kubernetes uh, to the industry stuff. Mm -hmm. So one of the projects I initiated was uh, CubeAge to basically uh, leverage the Kubernetes and uh, cloud native applications running on the edge computing uh, environment in scenarios. And also uh, later on, uh, another uh, kind of path is that uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, AI, uh, machine learning, big data uh, workloads trying to uh, run on top of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And we have seen that uh, actually, you know, Kubernetes is more like the uh, uh, born a very uh, well supporting the microservices. So, so we built the Volcano project to kind of uh, porting the like the the job management, the queue stuff, and the, like the GAN scheduling to uh, better leverage the, the batch AI machine learning workloads running on Kubernetes. Gotcha. Yeah, and uh, actually, I, I also have a, bit, a little bit background about the multi cluster, multi uh, cloud. Part. Oh, okay. Uh, I am a participant of the uh, multi cluster SIG in the uh, early time when it was called the Federation. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, after uh, two versions, Federation V1 and the CubeFed uh, uh, trying, uh, we, studying, we studied actually the V3 project. Uh, it's called the K Yamada. Mm -hmm. And also, it's, kind of, it's a sandbox <coughs> project in the CNCF. Gotcha. So, when I was uh, kind of doing some of the background research, um, mm -hmm. you know, my immediate thought is like, okay, Cube Edge and Volcano, mm -hmm. like, uh, do you, are are they related somehow? That in your mind, like, that they seem to mm -hmm. not be connected, really. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. both interesting, but mm -hmm. like, do you see them as a like somehow paired together, and that's why you're kind of working on both? Uh... I think uh, not uh, from, especially from the user perspective, maybe not quite connected. Uh -huh. Especially the typical user of CubeAge, it's like more from the industries like manufacturing than like public uh, public transporting or the other uh, people building the smart campus, for example. Mm -hmm. While the, the the user of uh, Volcano are more likely the academics, search, uh, research uh, organizations, or uh, some who are right. just running the uh, machine learning, uh, big data, uh, uh, trying on, on top of uh, Kubernetes. So a little bit of the connection, we think that um, uh, there, there are a lot of uh, AI workloads exploring to uh, the path to run on, uh, on, on, on edge. Gotcha. And uh, people are talking about the, like the in the future we may have some kind of uh, uh, redundant resources that it can be used like in the nights for mm -hmm. training. For example, uh, a lot of EV they are become more and more smart, but in the nights it's kind of the resources are just uh, sitting there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah. That, that's kind of future, but. Uh, from now, it, it's kind of still to projects uh, doing their mm. own stuff. That's interesting. Um, so yeah, kind of uh, uh, old school grid computing uh, kind of scenario <laughs> yeah. where you're like, hey, maybe we could use some of these resources to when they're not being used for other things. Mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. Uh, so with Cube Edge, um, you know. What do you think, and this is kind of the nature of this show, right? It's like, what do you think uh, is the, the thing that you think looks really interesting about it in, say, a six months or a year? Like, what's the, what's the next thing that's going to drop that you think looks really, really cool? Yeah, actually, I, I think the, the, the exciting thing uh, in the QBA, is especially from the uh, community perspective, there are a lot of uh, new uh, usage, uh, new ideas, uh, mm -hmm. kind of adopting uh, especially on the uh, edge that is keep moving 
Mm. Right. In the early days, we start the time. Uh, this we start this project. Uh, we are more likely focusing on the fixed location age, mm -hmm. like, like like the 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 uh, the kind of uh, some of the devices. Like a thermostat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and also uh, some of the manufacturers, they just uh, uh, deploy their applications with Cubage in, in, uh, in their factory, in their mm -hmm. workshop. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, during the, uh, the uh, last two years, uh, one of the academics, they, uh, they try to manage workloads on the low orbit satellite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah of, those are definitely moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and uh, it's a low orbit. It's actually moving very fast. It's like uh, you you got six to ten minute time window to stay online. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, it, uh, and then you have to wait again. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like uh, each day you will have like uh, eight to ten times. Uh, got this time window mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, the resource on the, the uh, satellite is quite limited mm -hmm. especially uh, they're using the the battery uh, sol uh, solarized the battery so it's kind of the the uh, we, we need to save the race uh, battery so it, the satellite can serve longer right right yeah and uh, and, and keep being a satellite <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 and and, and uh, uh, you know sending data to the ground it's kind of uh, cost a, a lot of battery uh, usage hmm. so uh, so that uh, the that academic they are trying to have some uh, small uh, model uh, 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 running on the satellite to do some like uh, easy analysis to filter uh, some of the uh, input data so they can send the most uh, valuable data, data back, back rather than back. all of it yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah, interesting yeah. Um, I bet that's a that is a hard decision to mm -hmm, get to mm -hmm, as well right mm -hmm. um, because one of the excuse me one of the fascinating things about data in recent history right is that you know people are collecting everything because they yeah, don't yeah. know what might be useful in the mm -hmm, future mm -hmm. uh, so that's a especially hard problem right because mm -hmm. it just disappears right mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. huh, yeah yeah so uh, another very interesting uh, usage is that uh, one of the uh, actually the automotive uh, manufacturer mm -hmm. they uh, use cubage in their uh, EV mm -hmm. uh, the starting uh, uh, mode was the, the uh, to write in one of the MPV because it's a kind of more, uh, more have more resource there, so they are uh, exploring the path of uh, enabling the SOTA, the basically the software level, uh, software level upgrading. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. because uh, before that they they have their own kind of uh, FOTA. It's a firm firm upgrading, but uh, you know when you are upgrading the firm, it's kind of the the, the car need to stop there, mm -hmm. wait the whole upgrading finished, and uh, you, you can go. Right, uh, right. But the uh, it's kind of take a long time, and a lot of uh, actually unrelevant thing need to be stopped. But the software level give you a kind of smaller uh, uh, component to, to be able to, to update. Uh, yeah. yeah, so you can yeah. do like smaller chunks at a time. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so they're using, they're looking at Cube Edge to kind of deliver those updates in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's kind of just a very uh, starting uh, usage. Mm -hmm. And also we know that uh, in China there are uh, kind of uh, companies exploring the kind of uh, the charging, especially changing the uh, battery. Mm -hmm. So they have their own uh, station there. And uh, uh, they are exploring the, the scenario like when your uh, car goes to near the uh, station, mm -hmm. uh, they they want to use some of the like the no local network to guide your car to the right place. Oh. And also oh. during uh, the changing of the uh, replacing the battery, uh -huh. uh, you you can also uh, trigger some of the upgrade of right, the software. Right, right, right. You can use it as an opportunity for basically fast data mm -hmm. transfer, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, huh. 
Uh, and so, th so is that what you've been kind of focusing on from your work perspective in, in Cube Edge itself, or, or is that just something that is going on that you think sounds really interesting? Uh, so currently we, we are collaborating with uh, these users to, to uh, implement that. For, mm -hmm. for example, Satellite, they have already uh, some of the Satellite running in orbit already, mm. but they want to kind of improve the whole platform to make it uh, much uh, smarter. Mm -hmm. And also like the vehicle currently, the, the in-car uh, deployment is already there, uh, but the charging station is kind of a new, uh, uh, new idea on the way. Yeah, and from my perspective, uh, we are kind of trying to uh, to decouple different things because Cubage, uh, from the uh, framework uh, layer, we want to keep it more general and uh, open to more of the scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the same time, we want to uh, uh, kind of provide more functionalities to help people simplify their adoption. So there will be some like toolkits uh, fit to each uh, each uh, part to yeah. kind of enable the consumption of these mm -hmm. new features. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's yeah, interesting. And I mean, part of the a lot of the problem with you know, especially incredibly sophisticated software like things like Cubedge, right? Like, is it just getting people to wrap their head around what mm -hmm. it's going to do for them or how it does it or whatever is is often half the battle, right? Yeah. Um, so I was curious also about uh, Volcano, which I thought was uh, you know interesting project. Can you tell mm -hmm. us, give us a little more detail on, on what Volcano does and what it's for? Yeah, uh, in a, at the very uh, starting point, uh, point, actually, we uh, were building uh, the uh, GAN scheduling. That's yep. kind of the first... Uh, requirement of all these AI uh, machine learning uh, and users and we know that uh, in Kubernetes it's kind of scheduled part by part right mm -hmm. uh, but for example the TensorFlow uh, people want uh, kind of have a quorum of the, uh, the, uh, the PS the parameter server or the worker node start then load the data to start chaining mm -hmm. if only a few uh, instance is there, it's kind of a uh, waste of the GPU, especially mm -hmm. GPU time. So uh, we uh, introduced the, the, the pod group concept and also the uh, volcano job concept concept to, to support multiple uh, AI framework definition. It's kind of you can define uh, the TF uh, kind of cluster or oh, torch. And it'll, it'll basically the, modify the scheduling, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. per, you know, for that set of things or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. And also, actually, um, uh, for the kind of traditional uh, batch user, they, they are very familiar with uh, queue. Functionality. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. batching up your work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So we also imported uh, uh, the queue concept and the build like the uh, hierarchic queue, mm -hmm. and also uh, implemented some of the algorithm uh, that's f quite familiar to the batch users, like fair sharing or uh, bin packing. To, right, right. To kind of uh, uh, also balance the resource usage. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, what we are uh, doing is the, to uh, to implement like the uh, uh, better resource sharing, uh, taking the uh, especially the online services and the batch workloads uh, uh, both into consideration, enable them to co-locate on the node and also uh, to provide the over subscription subscription of the resources of the res yeah and yeah. also uh, we uh, are actually uh, collaborating with the uh, uh, open uh, operating system community to uh, kind of achieve the node level uh, 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 resource preemption yeah. oh interesting okay um, yeah we uh, so I was I was at a thing or whatever and so are you using things like eBPMF uh, no wait um, yeah, like eBPF uh, mm -hmm. to do like how how are you communicating with like the OS level mm -hmm. uh, from inside Kubernetes? Like what what technique is it using? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So actually, uh, uh, when uh, it's like that, the whole system uh, ma- majorly we have uh, two uh, part like scheduling level. Mm-hmm. It's like we we need to uh, schedule according people uh, requested, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the people are able to declare like I have like two. Uh, two mega, uh, two gigabytes. That's kind of uh, not exactly using all the time. So mm-hmm. it, it can be uh, reused uh, if uh, if my uh, if I'm I'm not in a heavy load situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then when we are creating uh, this uh, container and on the node, uh, it's like we we need to do some of the annotation to. Uh, through the CRI mm-hmm. to tell the uh, basically uh, to tell the OS uh, when you are uh, creating you 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 are allocating these resources you can uh, put some of the part of the resources being shared right uh, so we uh, let user to define the different uh, priority of their um, uh, of the batches uh, or whatever the, the yeah. work, workload mm-hmm. basically and also define what kind of uh, how much they can share their resources, and then we can we will uh, just uh, put more like low priority workload there. Mm-hmm. The 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 role uh, what OS do is that they uh, they make sure the uh, the part of uh, resource can be shared with to the uh, lower priority workloads. Mm-hmm. But when the pressure comes uh, to the higher priority, uh, the OS needs to, to be able to preempt basically preempt yeah yeah take back the resource very quickly right right yeah. and the, the you know that the interesting thing is that the sharing among cpu time is it's uh, it's kind of much easier mm-hmm. but for the memory uh, it's kind of more uh, interesting because memory we it's kind of not easy to compress or Right, uh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and there's Which a lot. And there's also a, a much larger like security mm-hmm. component, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, because you don't really want this process to be able to read that process's memory, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah and yeah. so that can also be a bit of a challenge. I, I yeah. Imagine. So, 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 what, what uh, uh, the uh, OS team uh, they are exploring is that like uh, they they will uh, check and basically determine which kind, which application is kind of running, uh, and also uh, they can use like. Uh, Pages to 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 kind of save this memory and uh, compress it and uh, store it on, on the uh, in, to the disk mm-hmm. and then uh, the later on uh, resume it to the memory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so you were saying before that you uh, can kind of implement a different scheduler for different um, you know types of like AI approaches mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can you do it. Per workload, or do you do it for the cluster, or like how do you, mm-hmm. like where, at what level is the scheduler kind of going in? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, at the very beginning, we just replace the scheduler, but mm-hmm. uh, at the same time, we are kind of relying the multi scheduler mechanism uh, mm-hmm. from upstream. We are also contributor of that. So basically, you can uh, for the each workload. I remember. There is actually a scheduler name field, so mm. so so people uh, for the user they can just uh, determine which scheduler uh, the this pod gets scheduled. Right. Okay. Yeah, and also for Volcano, actually, it's kind of uh, uh, we. we 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 don't want uh, we don't think that multiple scheduler running inside a cluster is a good idea because you kind of have two brain to make decision. Right, right. Yeah, they're gonna like fight. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that was actually kind of why I asked the question because I was curious how do you yeah, make yeah, them yeah. play so, nicely together. So 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 the currently uh, we actually import the uh, upstream scheduler uh, algorithms. Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, scheduler is kind of a superset of all the functionality. So uh, you can also uh, uh, use Volcano to schedule the microservice uh, project. Uh, oh. Yeah. oh, okay. Um, and get, so, kind of to, so you can do other, other types of batch processes besides mm-hmm. kind of like the AI work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's cool. I, it's funny um, because yes, I'm very familiar with the batch process kind of for mm-hmm. research because mm-hmm. like I'm a 
professor at uh, uh, Boston mm -hmm. University, and, mm -hmm. and we have this whole research computing cluster, and it has like all the batch processes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's kind of like I, you know, I didn't know about the volcano before, and so now I kind of want to go back and mm -hmm. I actually mm -hmm. communicate with those folks a fair amount and kind of be like, hey, did you know about this project over here? You might you might find it really useful rather than because I'm yeah. sure they're maintaining their own scheduler right now mm -hmm. or the batch scheduler, not like mm -hmm. scheduling scheduler. Um, so yeah, it's super that's super interesting. I I really. Uh, uh, you know, I'm glad to kind of hear about it. Um, yeah. So, so what do you think the next cool thing is going to be in Volcano? Like, what's the what do you think the next big feature that you really want to see land? Um, actually, recently we are we, we, we are uh, taking a look about the uh, multi cluster uh, part. Okay. Especially uh, for uh, uh, for the Kamada project, we already did some kind of. Uh, trying and also some basic implementation about uh, scheduling the workload uh, among uh, clusters. Okay. I think that that's a kind of very uh, new area mm -hmm. because people today, the way they use uh, multiple scheduler, they are just uh, kind of manually picking the cluster to run. Where the, yeah, to put the and work. Especially for kind of the, the, the batch users, mm -hmm. they just want resources. They don't care about yeah, whether. Right. I don't care where it comes from. Just you know, let me know when it's done. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So um, um, actually, we we already have a very basic implementation in mm -hmm. the Kamala project. Uh, it's kind of help you automatically uh, divide the replicas mm -hmm. to multiple clusters according to the resource availability. Mm -hmm. And also, the most interesting thing is that people today they are. They want to take the like the quota into consideration. Take the price of the the underlying uh, resources, like the uh, the different cloud. They have different price for the right, CPU, right. memory, GPU. Yeah, yeah. Right. So so they want uh, uh, once they uh, kind of uh, imported this perspective into consideration, they can get cheaper. Uh, they can actually use the use part yeah. of the scheduling is also is not necessarily finding the most optimal place to run it or or mm -hmm. part of optimal mm -hmm. includes mm -hmm. price mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, which uh, yeah which is kind of a I think yeah. a new thing in mm -hmm. kind of all of our computing where it's like we're we need to work in the price point because we're not used to all this like public cloud and everything yeah. else where yeah. you know it's like you pay per you know minute or whatever and that now you want to build that we probably should have been building it into like all of our data centers for all these mm -hmm, years mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you know now that we really have to because we really care about the pricing um yeah. you know it's really it's interesting how much of it's become part of the schedulers and that kind of stuff yeah. there was actually um uh, a guy who's working on his phd at mm -hmm, uh, at, mm -hmm. at boston university mm -hmm. uh, who was working on tooling or trying to figure out how he can essentially do a scheduler mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. serverless functions mm -hmm, so that the serverless function would kind of like move around yeah. onto the different clouds based on price point mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know and so can can you optimize with that without the mass you know yeah. some sort of massive performance yeah, impact yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I just think it's all kind of really interesting to, to look at it from that perspective I've always thought schedulers were really interesting and so the more the you know, especially when they're really complex. Um, so yeah. what I wanted to ask you about the multi-cluster, mm -hmm. um, so in the multi-cluster scenario, you kind of already were saying that it's not great to run multiple scheduler types in mm -hmm. one cluster. Mm -hmm. So do you, now when you want to identify where to put a batch load, mm -hmm. Can, can you kind of indicate, does a cluster then decide, you know what, we're gonna go all TensorFlow because we have a lot of pent up workload instead of whatever other scheduler we are on and so that it can pick up those workloads? Like, are you gonna be able to modify or think about modifying kind of the cluster itself as part of the, the activity of balancing the workloads across the clusters? Uh, you mean modifying the clusters? Yeah, so like, okay, multi-cluster scenario, right? Mm -hmm. And each of the clusters is mm -hmm. probably running some scheduler, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know what in advance, mm -hmm. right? But our batch, in you know, 
tools or yeah, engine yeah, or whatever yeah. Yeah, yeah. is saying, hey, you know what? I've got a lot of TensorFlow stuff mm -hmm, coming mm -hmm, along. Mm -hmm. You cluster over there. You're not really doing a ton of stuff. So can you modify your scheduler mm -hmm, to be the TF one mm -hmm, so that I can push a bunch of that workload there? Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's why uh, the actually we are trying to do a more uh, kind of powerful uh, version in the a volcano project yeah. because uh, we are uh, expecting expecting people to kind of use volcano in the single cluster mm -hmm. uh, as the scheduler because it, it's able to schedule the batch workloads as well as the uh, kind of uh, classic Kubernetes applications, right? Right. right. And also, uh, uh, actually, we already seeing a lot of challenges doing the two level scheduling, mm -hmm. schedule to cluster and the cluster do it. Do, do their job, right? Right, and and the, actually, you cannot always uh, make sure the, the 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 federation level scheduling is it, it, is correct or is the best because mm -hmm. there's always some race condition and uh, uh, the federation la layer uh, it uh, the scheduler see there are some resource available. Also, we can take kind of the resource fragmentation into consideration, right? Mm -hmm. But the the underlying uh, in cluster scheduler, they are also doing their own work. Mm -hmm. So so the things can be changing. So what we do today is that we 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 have a kind of descheduler at the federation level to kind of. You, you, you know, get things yeah, like, fixed. Yeah, like like leave me alone so that I can I can do proper uh, scheduling. Uh, but but okay. but uh, you you know it's uh, we think it's kind of expensive because uh, it, it it takes a, a little bit time and uh, computing steps to to make sure to find out which cluster or which set of cluster to run these workloads mm -hmm. and uh, some of the part uh, some of the uh, Actually, the replicas may fail, mm. uh, and then you come back. It's kind of uh, uh, it's a long cycle, mm -hmm. right? So that's why we think that maybe the the uh, we provide a, a multi-cluster uh, scheduling functionality from the volcano, and make uh, the kind of federation layer scheduler uh, and the, the single cluster scheduler collaborate with each other more closer right uh, we'll resolve this uh, situation better yeah. especially we want to improve the kind of uh, the accuracy of the first time scheduling yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah well I mean you know uh, scheduler are, are interesting right because one of the things that is a challenge is like you can't spend so much you know processing mm -hmm. you know power doing the perfect schedule such that it actually uses up whatever mm -hmm. optimization that you, you know, we're going to get from your mm -hmm. perfect scheduling, which mm -hmm. I always think is, you know, it's, it's weird when you write, have to write software that is going to, you know, optimizations are sometimes the, at a, the expense of developing the optimization, you know, mm -hmm. um, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's neat. Um, I, I, I think a lot of that stuff is uh, really interesting. And then you mentioned uh, there's a third project that you've been working the on. Kamada. Oh, right, right. So um, And so multi-cluster management, but you're mostly thinking about it in terms of like scheduling rather than like um, kind of like you personally from a, a, like the scheduling kind of scenarios rather than, um, you know, how do you uh, manage a mm -hmm. large number of clusters, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, for the Kamada, we, we, we are thinking that people have different kind of uh, uh, progress of using the multi-cluster uh, architecture or multi-cloud architecture, mm -hmm. especially for the very uh, beginning, uh, the, the very beginners, uh, they, they just uh, want to reduce some of the uh, repeating work, like uh, spinning up clusters. Uh, spinning up uh, for the cluster lifecycle management, we have the like uh, cluster API already, mm -hmm. right? But there are a lot of work when the cluster uh, is there. For example, configuring the namespaces, configuring right. the RBAX, and also uh, setting up the, the quota for different teams, right? Right. And we, uh, so the idea of Kamada is that we, uh, for this level, we want to kind of uh, reduce the work 
uh, from the admin perspective. Mm -hmm. So Kamada uh, provided some of the mechanism called the, the propagation policy. So it's basically uh, able to propagate any type of the Kubernetes resources, including mm -hmm. the custom resource. Right. Yeah, okay. So so people are able to like propagate RBAC configurations, uh -huh. configure maps. Uh, namespaces, namespaces or resource quota mm -hmm. and as well as the the deployment mm -hmm. but for deployment for the state set the, we are able to kind of compute the uh, the the resource consumption of the part from the part perspective to make sure you you, you get appropriate replicas of the the the, the, the application running in, in different clusters right right and also uh, like today uh, actually you know uh, when people accessing the multiple clusters, the management of the cube config is actually a big challenge, both mm. from the user perspective and from the admin perspective. So, uh, so Kamada also provide the kind of unified entry point to multiple clusters. Uh, the, the from a little bit of the implementation uh, perspective is that we use the impersonate. Uh, mechanism from the HTTP, HTTP uh, protocol. So mm -hmm. it's kind of uh, actually uh, the online uh, from the user. It's like uh, I will use uh, one uh, one of my kube config token to access uh, all the clusters through a single entry point. Mm. So I, I just need, need to select which cluster I want to go, but I use the same kube config. And uh, the Kamada uses its own uh, token, actually, underlying under the hood to to connect with the underlying uh, cluster, but impersonate as the user. So, uh, so it means that any uh, request going to the uh, request to go into the uh, underlying member cluster, it's authorized as the user. Oops. Oh, sorry, I just, um, I thought that was a stoplight and the guy yeah. was right behind me. Um, but, uh, okay, yeah, so continue. So basically, yeah. you can actually, if you use the kind of the impersonator, you can you can kind of audit and, and have an idea of who's doing the work uh, yeah. to make the changes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so from the admin perspective, it's super useful because you, you got a, a single point of the entry for all these uh, kind of users or application uh, uh, operators right? mm -hmm. so you can audit just there and uh, and you got unified uh, authentication authorization it's much uh, easier to uh, manage to manage it over yeah right yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. no yeah. that's cool um, so uh, let's kind of ask a, a slightly broader question. Mm -hmm. What you know, kind of what got you into like open source and kind of Kubernetes? Like, how did you get started? You know, kind of working in this space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that, that's a very uh, interesting topic. So in the early days, it's like we we are trying to build the uh, platform as a, a service product internally. Mm -hmm. But later on, uh, actually, our team. Uh, so Huawei decided to to do the cloud business, mm -hmm. and uh, so we started to building services for our uh, customers. And uh, actually, before uh, Kubernetes, we also tried uh, some of the other technologies. But Kubernetes is the first one that we see a very open community. Uh, in the early days, uh, like back to 2015, mm -hmm. uh, the scalability is like uh, 500 nodes, right? And yeah. there are a lot of uh, 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 scheduling uh, features to be uh, added. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in that day, I, uh, I uh, uh, kind of uh, very uh, fortunately uh, Join the community to discuss with uh, the the people about yeah. our idea, and we got very short time of the for the ideas to be accepted, and mm. uh, we started contributing. Right, right. So that that actually kind of experience affect us a lot. So uh, we actually benefit a lot from collaborating with uh, collaborating with the upstream community. Yeah, yeah. 
And uh, that's why when we are building the new services, we also open source it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then donate it to CNCF. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that you can kind of benefit from that. So so that was your personal first foray into open source in general? Yes, yes. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a uh, you know it's a great like it's a great opening story right I mean a lot of times uh, you know uh, your first uh, you know entrance into open source uh, is because you have some sort of problem right and it, yeah. but it sounds to me more like you were uh, you know you kind of had hey we we think you've got the right solution if we can you know kind of make this work for us it'd be really cool um, uh, that's awesome so so you um, so your organization has like done heavy adoption of Kubernetes kind of internally as well? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Well, we actually, uh, there are also a kind of internal uh, user, internal customer. Mm -hmm. They have a very large scale uh, uh, deployment of the Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, uh, from our perspective, uh, we are trying to uh, provide the, the best solution. So mm -hmm. actually, uh, uh, we actually the internal user they are using the same version we offer to the customer. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, w uh, when I was at Red Hat, um, we used to mm -hmm. refer to it as eating mm -hmm. your own dog food. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, which I would say is probably a relatively common phrase. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think it's always such a good idea to you know if you if your first customers of your of your software, um, it makes it you know a lot less painful for your customers you know yeah, 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 yeah. um so yeah and uh, uh, especially uh, i think one of the interesting things that uh, recent years more and more customers also collaborate with us on the open source mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of the, not just the using the uh, commercial part but yeah. they also have some idea they also have some requirement right uh, Actually, they are not kind of 100% uh, certain about their requirement, especially yep. from the solution perspective, right? Right. People are always uh, kind of uh, uh, trying to avoid uh, falling into some like X, Y problem situation, right? Yeah, yeah. In the community, we can discuss with more people and to come up with a, a more uh, general uh, solution. Mm -hmm. So, so I think that that's also very uh, exciting thing. Right. So, right. Uh, like uh, today, we have a lot of uh, uh, features. Actually, the idea is coming from one of the end users mm -hmm. or one of the uh, the, the uh, service providers in the community, and we discuss together and uh, implement it together. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Um, well, why don't we end the interview there? Um, thank you so much for uh, taking a little tour of Amsterdam with me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and uh, you know, and uh, but it was a pleasure to talk to you. I, I like I said, I've always been fascinated by schedulers, so I really like talking about them, uh, even though I've never actually worked on any. Um, but uh, you know, I get I get really interested in technologies that I don't actually do sometimes. Uh, so thanks again. I really appreciate it. Thank you.